Hi everyone, in this video we're going to show you how to use the clone brush to fix UV seams and map boundaries in Reality Paint both Pro and Standard. And now let's first start off by uh, showing you this texture that was done um, by an artist uh, named Phoenix1966 um, who uh, provided us with uh, this, this great content to work with here. And uh, we just we just love this texture so much. It's just got so much uh, gritty detail into it. It's very photorealistic. So we wanted to feature it as an example in this uh, tutorial. However, um, this tutorial specifically for fixing seams that were done in uh, 2D painting applications, which isn't the case here because uh, this was done in Reality Paint. But what we did is we deliberately sort of messed up the seams a little bit here just so we can show you uh, how to fix them. So this is like a typical sort of situation where you're doing a, um, a 2D painting and perhaps uh, GIMP or Photoshop or another 2D painting application and everything else looks great except for you get these few spots where this, it's you just don't really know how to deal with the seams, especially when there's a lot of subtle detail. If this was all just kind of blurry color, it, you know, it'd be easy to fake it in a 2D painting application. But here we want to make those, those seams undetectable. So we're going to show you how to do it here. So there's a few different techniques, but we're going to show you one using the clone brush. So let us first start off by showing you where that is. We have paint tools um, and clone brush right here. And what you can always do is we're going to come back to this often, so I'm going to assign it to a hotkey. So if I right click and I say assign hotkey, and I say OK, and I hit the key one, the, the button one on my keyboard, then that means uh, I've done now associated that key um, with that action. So now if I close it, I can uh, say if I have a different tool here, I am just moving around and I just hit that key and go right back to my clone tool. Anyway, so uh, let us see, let's just start off with the default parameters here and just show you what the, the clone brush does. So um, if you notice if I hold alt I get this crosshair and what this does allows me to establish a reference point and so this is the point where I'm going to start click, uh, cloning from. So if I hold alt and then I click on this spot, right, that means this little bit is going to be uh, um, stamped onto the first place I start clicking uh, when I don't have the alt key press. So I, so I establish here and if I go over to this part I just click and uh, let me just click and drag a bit and show you. See how I'm cloning all that stuff from here to here. But the way we're going to do this, we're going to do this from a minimalist point of view. So we're not going to do like a big clone stroke like this because it's just, it's, um, things just don't always work out. So we want to do little bits at a time. So I'm going to, what you do is you try to match up, if, um, if this is the part you want to fix, you try to match up something with a similar tone. So when it comes over, it just blends in nicely. So uh, here I'm going to, let me see, for this little part, I'm going to click over here as my, uh, as my reference. And I'm just going to do a couple, like a subtle click here, and another subtle click there. And not too much. And you know what? Yeah, that's fine. Let's do that again. See, just like a little impression. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to establish another um, uh, reference point by alt clicking here. And I'm just going to subtly click over here just a little bit. And again over here. And see that? You know, I didn't like that because this light patch uh, um, sort of showed up. You really want to do it from a absolute minimalist point of view. You just want to do the bare minimum amount to make that seam not show up anymore. Otherwise you, you can really you can kind of see the pattern of the brush stroke in there. And uh although you won't see the seam, you'll see you know something that doesn't look so good either. So minimal is best. Okay? And so we'll just do a little bit more here. And so let me hit my hotkey one again to bring it back. And so I'll just take a bit of this over here. And just click click really subtle. You know, I don't like that part, so I'm going to do that. There we go. And what, um, you notice that when we um, what we do is we also have a tone difference from over from this side of the the seam to that side of the seam, and so uh, that can often be a little tricky to deal with. So you really have to be careful. Um, ideally, you you when you're making the initial texture, you'd rather not have that um, that kind of uh, difference. And we did this on purpose just to illustrate the seam, just to let you know the original artist. Phoenix 1966 did an amazing job with this. We deliberately messed up the seam here just so we can show you how to fix it, okay? I just want that to be clear. Uh, okay, so let's just do a little more here. And dum -de dum So you see, you get the idea here. We're just taking little bits from here and there, touching up the rough spots, 
and again from an absolute minimalist point of view so now let's just take a look here from okay we got the left uh, viewport see this we can we can probably find a little bit more details to put in there too that's a little looking a little smooth but for now let's now there's the right see a very distinguishable seam there an undetectable seam okay so just to uh just to for the sake of completeness let's go in and see if we can improve upon this okay so i'm going to zoom in a bit more and see that part's a little blurry um so we want to get some of this kind of detail over there so let's get the clone brush again and let's take some of this stuff here and let's just whoop. see that line is from because we reached the edge of the viewport when we were cloning there we go nice oh it's a very important point i almost forgot to mention if you see this uh, resolution parameter right what this does is this um this makes the viewport itself be re-rendered in the background at a higher percentage because um we're using the viewport image as our source texture okay and um and so it doesn't matter what the resolution of the underlying map is if the viewport is small or if it were zoomed out then the details that we clone are going to be you know they're going to be low resolution by nature but we want to compensate for that by taking this number here resolution as being 100 we're going to crank this up to 600 percent okay so you can even go higher as long as your system can handle it because um, at some point it might become uh, really too, too slow to render the background you might run out of ram any number of things but you can experiment after saving your project of course by cranking this number up as high as you can and still having you know comfortable performance uh, but for now we'll do 600 percent because i know that's safe so now let's try cloning this again here we go now let's see if we get better results see the detail actually is a little better but we're getting a little too dark so let's take some lighter stuff here there we go that's much less blurry than it was before and so this yeah behaves an awful lot like a clone brush you'd get in um, any standard 2d painting application um, and another thing to note is that the resolution on this side is different from the resolution on this side let me show you uh, with the resolution visualizer see how these grid this these grid um, blocks here are large and these ones are small that means that uh, this is a lower resolution than that. We have more pixels um, jammed into a small space here and less over here. So if I even zoom in, we see that these little tiny squares are individual pixels as they are on the texture map, right? And so it's, it's a what you see is what you get system here. At any particular point, as soon as you do your paint stroke, you see the exact pixel distribution as the final texture map going out is. So that's one of the advantages of Rally Paint. And over here, these squares are much smaller, right? So that means that's a higher resolution. That's just the way this model is set up, that the face, the front half of the texture, has a higher resolution than the, uh, the back of the head. So let's go back to color maps. And da -da -da. here we go. So that's why and if you're cloning from this side, you might actually notice that the result is a uh, slightly uh, lower res than from cloning this side. So if it's all the same, choose the part which has a higher resolution. And uh, so anyway, that seam is all but gone. But since we're here, let's just fix up a couple of these patchy spots just to show you how it's done. All right? This is all really simple stuff. Uh, so see this part here, I want it to be more of this tone. So I'm going to grab that. And I'm just going to click over here, single clicks, nice little tiny clicks. Little clicks. There we go. Look at that. Really nice. So, um, yes, so that is the general procedure on um, how you can uh, really quickly fix up texture seams using the clone brush in Reality Paint. So, if you prefer to use a 2D painting application for most of your work, then that's great. That's perfect. Let Reality Paint be there for you just to fix up those little technical things like UV seams and UV stretching uh, that you can't do in the 2D painting application and uh, let it complete your workflow and allow you to make amazing textures with some uh, artistic skill, of course, like this one here. So, so again, thank you very much, uh, Phoenix1966, for 
making such wonderful art using reality paint um, so anyway uh, that's it for this video please stay tuned we got much more to come